Back in 2013, my boyfriend and I had moved to a different town for a year. We ended up finding an old house from 1909 and renting it for the year. A few months after we moved in, we occasionally started hearing these really loud thumping and banging noises coming from the ceiling. The sounds would never start until we were in bed for the night and the TV was off. The attic had been sealed up and there were no holes for animals to get in. Sometimes they would be so loud that it would rattle the entire house. Nobody would believe me, so I tried recording some of these noises. Have a listen. We did have friends stay overnight a couple of times, but of course the thumping sounds would never happen when they were there. We asked around and tried to find any possible explanation for this, but couldn't come up with anything. Eventually I came up with the idea to record in the bedroom while we were sleeping. I immediately caught two things over the next couple of nights. Neither of these voices are my boyfriend, and since I was alone a lot during the night, boyfriend worked odd shifts. I decided that I'd rather be ignorant than scared to sleep in my own house, so I stopped recording. I'm sort of curious what anyone thinks about this or if they can understand the EVPs. It was a happy day when we were able to move away from there. So when I was about 8, my mom married my now stepdad and we moved into a 5 bedroom house to fit the whole family. My siblings got the bedrooms upstairs while I got the bedroom in the basement. I remember crying for hours refusing to go down there because I was scared of the dark and I felt like something was watching me. I remained with the feeling until I moved out 2 years ago shortly after I turned 18. Let's skip to June of the first year we were there. I had this weird nightmare involving Bigfoot the monster from the Black Lagoon, a mummy, and something else I can't remember. They killed my mom and pushed me off of a cliff. Every June every year I lived there, I had a nightmare, all in the same location. Time didn't progress in the dreams except for my age. The final dream, I defeated the monsters and then the next month I moved out of the house. But more happened in the house. So it had two bathrooms, one just had a toilet and a shower in the basement, and directly above it was the main bathroom with a tub. When I was 12, I was taking a shower and I was playing with a marble for some reason. I dropped it and it bounced on the tub, making the sound ding, ding, ding. I picked up the marble and from underneath the tub, as it was exposed to the basement, something knocks on the tub. Ding, ding, ding. I assumed it was my stepdad being funny and I knocked on the tub, ding, ding, and he knocks back, ding, ding. I knock again and he knocks again. I laugh and get out of the shower. I get dressed and go into the living room and that's when I remember. I was home alone. My parents had left before I got into the shower. I spent the next hour in the living room until they got back and had them show me the house was clear. Fast forward to 16, my girlfriend was staying the night. I don't know what she was doing but I was in my room playing video games and I hear her call out my name. I get up and go see what she wants and seem to have spooked her. Apparently she had just saw me walk into the laundry room, also in the basement, and was certain of it that she thought maybe it was somebody else in there. I checked and it was empty. Things like this continued until I moved out. I would see my mom go into the downstairs bathroom but she was in the laundry room. I would see my girlfriend go into my bedroom but she was upstairs in the living room. Once she saw me walking up the stairs and heard the stairs creaking as I walked up, but she went to the room and I was playing on the computer. I finally moved out of that house and the nightmare stopped, and I haven't seen anybody entering a room since either, but it still freaks me out.
I've known about this experience that my mom had for a while and thought I'd share it here to get some of your thoughts. A little background, my mom was born and raised in a very, very remote and small town in India. If you've ever been to India, you'll know that once you leave the major cities, the country is composed vastly of agricultural areas. Her village was primarily all farmers, so almost 95% of the town was made up of these huge acres and acres of farms that stretched out for miles. Every household had huge amounts of land that they would use to farm on. This was about 34 years ago in a very rural part of India, so a lot of their small roads were narrow and made of gravel. Keep in mind that most people traveled by foot because cars were way too expensive and didn't serve a purpose for a largely agricultural town. Now, India is also extremely diverse in terms of the type of communities that live there. So you have the townsfolk, but also have indigenous populations as well who cross through from time to time. Again, usually always on foot. So my mom's family was also primarily farmers, and adults and kids would all help out at the farm. My mom was 11 at the time, and she was helping my great-grandfather at the farm. So my great-grandfather was doing some work that was near the boundary of our farm and the neighbor's farm. The two farms were separated by a small gravel road. The rest of the area was all farmland. The neighbor's farmhouse was maybe a minute or so away by foot because they were so close to the boundary. Anyway, my great-grandfather told my mom to keep working and stay where she was, and that he would be back in a little while because he needed to go grab some tools. He told her if she needed anything that she could walk over to the neighbor's farmhouse. Fast forward 20 or so minutes, my mom's by herself minding her own business with no one around her. In the distance, she sees what looks like a stray dog, very common in India, come down the gravel road. Then right behind the dog, she starts to see a woman. Right after the woman, my mom saw two children, then a large camel, then a lot more people. All in all, she described what was about 15 to 20 people and maybe three camels. They started to get more clear as they were walking down the road. My mom noticed they belonged to a different community because of the way they were dressed. It took them a little while to get to where my mom was because they were pretty far off in the distance. When the woman sees my mom, she stopped everyone and she calls my mom over. So my mother goes over because again, this is a small town in India and there's not much crime activity or anything to be afraid of. The woman asked my mom where this road leads, and at first my mom couldn't understand her so well because the woman had a strong accent that was hard to understand. Again, common in India because there's probably hundreds of different languages there. So it took my mom a few seconds to process and understand what the woman said. My mom eventually understood, but she had a slow response time. And before my mom could reply, the woman asked my mom if she would be willing to walk them down the road and points forward. At this moment, the dog that was with the group kind of starts to get a bit more rowdy and growls a bit. My mom has always been deathly afraid of dogs because stray dogs in India are pretty aggressive. So as soon as she hears some growling, my mom starts running to the neighbor's farmhouse. It was about a minute or so away, so she got there pretty quick when running. She tells the neighbor about the dog and the group of people asking for directions. The neighbor asks my mom to show him where they were so he can talk to them. They go back to the road again, all of this maybe spanning about two and a half minutes at max. When the two of them get back to the road, there's absolutely no one in sight. No camels, no people, no kids, no animals. Everyone is literally gone. Now it's possible that that group of people booked it out of there with their children and camels, but if you've ever seen a camel in real life, they're pretty slow. So my mom thought it was really weird that they had all just disappeared in a matter of minutes. It's possible that they went off of the road and into the surrounding farms, but they still would have been visible since it was just the start of the farming season and no crops were big enough to hide entire people, and certainly not camels. Fast forward to that night, my mom tells the rest of her family the unusual encounter she had. She doesn't believe it to be paranormal at the time, but thinks it's extremely unusual and can't figure out where those people could have gone. One of my great aunts immediately tells her that the group of people my mom saw sounds like a type of spirit. She says that the spirit's main objective is to trick people with illusions that ultimately lead the person into harm and serious injury. And now I don't know if I even believe that explanation or not, but what I know is that my mom believes that there was no way those people could have disappeared into thin air in just a few minutes. 
There was nowhere for them to go but open land. Does anyone have any thoughts? To start, me and my buddy were sitting on the back smoking. We were outside during the winter, and we made quick work of what we had rolled up and headed back inside. We couldn't have been outside more than five to eight minutes max. A sliding glass door leads directly into my living room and we sat on the couch. He noticed that the PlayStation 4 controller had moved from the coffee table to the kitchen counter. The kitchen isn't far away from the living room, so we just assumed that one of us had put it there without noticing. The TV I own doesn't have an on button directly on it, so we needed a remote to turn it on. We couldn't find it for the lives of us. We tore apart the couch and love seat, looked under them, checked the kitchen, and it was nowhere to be seen. This whole endeavor for the remote lasted a total of 10 minutes, so we decided to go to the basement TV, hook up the PlayStation 4 and play there. We turned on the TV and started playing. For about 3 hours, we played until 2am. We got tired and decided it was time to head to bed. At this point, we were coming down and we were just really tired. I crashed immediately. I woke up at 4.15am to the sound of something banging downstairs in the living room. After five minutes of this banging, I decided to go and find out what it was. At this point, I'm completely sober. I stepped over my buddy and headed down the stairs from my room on the second story. When I turned the light on at the bottom of the stairs, everything went completely quiet. Nothing. No banging. Nothing at all. I noticed the sliding door was opened ajar and I could see the little pile of snow on the floor. I closed the door, locked it, and barred it. If you don't know what that is, it's just a bar you put on the track of the door so it doesn't slide even if it's unlocked. What caught my attention was that the remote control in the living room was clearly sitting on the coffee table. I remember thinking to myself, wow, we're complete morons for not finding that. I flipped the switch on the bottom of the stairs and start going back up to bed. As soon as my butt hits the bed, an extremely loud crash and clanging comes from the living room. This scared the crap out of me. I didn't check it out this time and I just laid in bed waiting to fall back asleep. The next morning we head downstairs in the broad of daylight and I saw the sliding glass door open about halfway with a lock completely thrown off the wall and the door bar was wrecked, like bent and busted. It's a metal rod meant to keep a huge glass door from opening so I immediately checked whether anything was robbed or stolen but couldn't notice anything, except one thing was missing. The remote control was no longer on the coffee table from where I saw it the last night. The next night was probably the worst nights of my life. My friend left around noon that day. He helped me seal the door with a couple of pieces of wood and some broken hockey sticks. Since there was no lock anymore, we went overkill and put so much garbage on the track that nothing could even make the door budge. The day was normal, nothing really happened, a little bit of sounds here and there, but nothing that I couldn't blame on the pipes or wind. As soon as nightfall hit, that's when things started getting weird. I felt like the sounds turned into knocking, like now it wasn't house sounds anymore, it felt like it was something more human-like and deliberate. I noticed this when I coughed and heard a knock directly after. I tested it, and without fail every time I coughed a knock would follow. I started coughing violently like I was having an asthma attack or something and coughed in the most silent way possible and the knocking followed along. This freaked me out. I was communicating with something in some way and I didn't like it. So I said screw it, closed my bedroom door and went to sleep. Again, two nights in a row I wake up to banging. At this point I'm so angry and freaked out that I wanted to know what is causing this. I told myself, ghosts don't exist. Just some messed up kids in the neighborhood being little a-holes outside banging on stuff. This was just a thought to justify why I'm running in the darkness where disembodied banging is coming from. I grab my phone and turn on the flashlight. I ran down the stairs and turned the light on at the bottom. The living room lit up and nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary. I examined the room and still saw nothing. As soon as I turned around, something knocked on the glass sliding door then the kitchen window, the dining room window, the office windows, and finally it stopped at the front door. The knocking went completely around half of my house in about four seconds. I ran upstairs, closed my door, hid under the covers before I finally passed out. I've never been so scared in my life.
The next morning, I've never been so distraught in my life, but it was just about to get worse. I pulled the covers from over my head to my completely sunlit room. To my horror, the living room remote control was sitting on my lap with all the numbers and icons scratched out. I hopped in my car with my robe on and sped over to my parents' house. I'm 25 and I've never had a single paranormal experience outside of my four years of college. During those four years, I had upwards of 20 different unique experiences, alone and with other people. I went to a small liberal arts college in New England and was good friends with one of the public safety officers who worked the night shifts. He and I would spend many late nights observing all the old buildings till early morning, and let me tell you, it almost always resulted in unexplainable happenings. Having said that, one night we were in the basement of the science building. X, my public safety officer friend, had told me that the men's room had some peculiar activity lately. The one automatic toilet would flush on its own, as well as the motion sensor lights would turn on simultaneously. We had set out to see if it would happen again. After an hour of listening and observing, we eventually tried to ask and reason with whoever into activating the motion lights and motion flush toilet. Eventually the motion lights kicked on to our amusement and we backed down the hallway to give it more space. Mainly I think it freaked us out, it basically turned the light on on command. Anywho, X was thanking it for answering our plea and was trying to see if it would flush the toilet as well. A couple of minutes of silence go by and X looks at me with a puzzled face, asking me if I hear that. It was a rapid ticking sound, very faint but almost grew louder the moment I noticed. We eventually find the source, a basic wall clock in the main hallway. The minute, hour, and second hand were flying around the clock. I have never seen anything like that. It was like someone was just cranking the dials in the back of it as hard as they could. We both stared at it for a minute, in disbelief I think, and I eventually uttered a command to stop that, and it stopped. We took the sucker off the wall so fast. I like to find reasons for why things that seem paranormal occur, I looked to debunk before I even deem it a ghostly encounter. I was certain that I'd find the clock hooked up to a wire that led to someone messing with us. X was quite the joker, so I was dead set on being played. This is a cheap little thing, probably ten bucks at Staples or something. There were no wires, just the knobs for the three hands on the back. I couldn't find a reasonable explanation. X swore to me it wasn't his doing, and that for all the times he had been through the building, he'd seen it do that once, about a year or two prior, but at a different time of night. This occurred to us at around 1.18 a.m., if I recall correctly. So we put it back on the wall and wandered the rest of the building, trying to figure out how and why this clock did that. On the second floor of the same building, we pass a small lounge and common area, and we both see it. The same style and brand clock above one of the sofas, it's doing the exact same thing as the one downstairs. We look at each other, and I yell at it for it to stop. It doesn't stop as suddenly as the first clock, but probably five or six seconds later. Note that the second clock spun much shorter than the first clock did, and basically on my command did both clocks stop, and I mean entirely stop, completely frozen. We investigated the second clock, same deal, not hooked up to wires, just the knobs. I placed it back on the wall and we called it a night. On the way out through the basement door we passed the first clock. It had reset to the current time and was ticking normally now. It did this while X and I were upstairs. We were a little too freaked out to see if the upstairs clock had reset itself too. Now, I did some research on this clock brand, obviously I can't remember the name now, and found no hints of why they would behave the way we witnessed. We thought maybe it was daily mechanical reset but both occurred at different times, as well as the first time X witnessed it the year or two prior. Plus, these little cheap clocks were just not mechanically advanced for it to have that type of action, you know. I'm not sure if it was due to the little battery, or what, but to have those two clocks go hyperdrive at two separate times at two separate locations was pretty insane. Also to have them both stop, seemingly on command as well as resetting to the correct time after leaving the clock stuck on the time it stopped at, was really intriguing. Was it paranormal? I'm really thinking it was. 
Is there an explanation for what I witnessed? Maybe. I hope so. Maybe someone reading this will know. Was it the best way to spend my Friday night? You bet. We investigated that building many a time after that night, at different times of night and early morning, and we never experienced anything from those clocks or any clock again. That basement men's bathroom, however, is a whole nother story for next time. This happened when I was in college when I moved into a house on a lake in a rural area with two other guys. We would call them roommate A and roommate B. The house was a single level ranch with a large open basement. The three bedrooms and bathroom were connected by the same hallway located at one end of the house. At the other end of this hallway was the dining room, kitchen, and living room. The house wasn't occupied for a while and some weird stuff started happening since day one. So, this is a compilation of events that happened to each of us over the year that we lived in that house. A little background information. We went to a school that was based off of trimesters and had school year-round, so we had three sets of finals every year and the activities seemed to increase around this time. All these stories aren't going to be in a linear timeline, just stuff that happened over the year. Roommate A was the first to experience something. He was the first to move into the house and was alone in it for the first night. He was laying down, ready to go to bed probably at around 11pm after locking up the house. Around 11.30 or so, he heard footsteps going from one of the other bedrooms along the hallway and into the kitchen. Being that this was the first night in a new house, he was a little rattled so he grabbed his shotgun and opened his bedroom door to see who was there. No one was in the house. Roommate A told roommate B and myself what happened and we blew him off thinking nothing of it. Nothing happened for a couple of weeks until we would hear the doorbell ring in the middle of the day for no reason. Our property wasn't one where we could go play ding dong ditch and if you did we would see you coming from a mile away. This would happen sporadically throughout the year, even in the winter months and there were no footprints in the snow. After about a month of living there roommate B walked into the kitchen one morning when roommate A and I were cooking breakfast and asked us, were one of you taking a shower around 1.30 last night? Both of us were very confused and he goes on to say that night he heard the shower running when he was in his room for around 10 minutes and figured one of us was just showering, but we were both fast asleep. Over the next week, roommate B would have a piece of paper fly off his desk every now and then when he was laying in bed. The house didn't have an AC and his fan would not be on when these papers would fall off his desk. Little things would happen every now and then. Footsteps, papers falling, doorbell ringing, but the most action occurred when we were studying for our last set of finals before moving out of the house. When my roommates and I were talking about it afterward, we felt that whatever it was fed off of our stress and probably didn't like change too much because most of the stuff happened right as we moved in, during finals and when we were moving out. Well, during our last set of finals is when things kind of went haywire. Things were relatively normal, where random stuff would happen once every three days or so. But one night, I was up late studying and both my roommates were asleep. The house was all locked up and the only lights that were on were my rooms and the bathrooms. Like I said earlier, all the bedrooms were at the end of the house along with the bathroom and a hallway connected it to the kitchen and living room. Well, I needed to go to the bathroom and so I open my door and head to the bathroom. As I am coming out, I take a step out and out of the corner of my eye, I see a shape or shadow standing at the end of the hallway, almost in the kitchen. This shadow looked basically the same shape of a human with arms but no legs, almost like it was wearing a dress or something. It stood almost to the ceiling, so around 8 to 9 feet or so, and hovered around 1 foot off the ground. I was scared completely out of my wits, but didn't want to look at it too long in case it wanted to try and come at me or something. From the corner of my eye, I stare at it for a second and then make my way to my room. As I am leaving, I can see it move from where I saw it almost in the kitchen and hover into the living room where I lost sight of it. It freaked me out to say the least and I couldn't really study after it and just tried to go to sleep. A couple of nights after this happened, an even closer encounter happened that screwed me up for a while and I still have chills thinking about it. 
so I'm going to bed after a night of studying. I typically have Netflix running as I'm going to sleep because I don't like the total silence, but I eventually pass out and all is well around 4am. I wake up in a panic, shooting up out of bed because someone is yelling, and I mean screaming in my left ear the name Elizabeth. It has been over a year and I can still remember the voice clear as day. It was a deep, craggly voice that was yelling at the top of its lungs. When I heard the voice at first, I was in that half-awake, half-asleep state, and I heard the first two syllables, Eliz, and as I was shooting up, freaked out because of what I was hearing, I continued to hear the second two syllables of the name Abeth. I was shook. I didn't know what to do and my heart was racing. The Netflix stopped some time when I was asleep, so the best thing I could think of was to turn on Netflix, turn around my bed so I faced the wall, and try to go back to sleep. Well, I didn't really sleep much that night, and I told my roommates what happened last night, and they said that they didn't hear anyone yell the name Elizabeth in the middle of the night. The freaky thing is that I do not know an Elizabeth, and have no idea how that name came into my head. I have been too freaked out still to see if there was any Elizabeth that was related to the property that we were renting, so it still remains a mystery of who she was. That was pretty much the climax of the activity that happened around the house because we moved out soon after that. The new owner of the house was completely renovating and adding on to the house. We always joked that the house was going to go crazy with activity, but we never contacted the owner to see if there was anything that was going on. If you guys have any answers or input, I would truly appreciate it. I've told this event to maybe three people in my life in an effort to find some understanding to it, but I just came away feeling more misunderstood. When I was 11, I lived in New Jersey with my parents and two brothers. I never really had anything out of the ordinary happen in the house until my dad started getting sick. I was being shielded about how sick he was because I was so young, but he had terminal cancer. This is about October of 86. About this time I started hearing the footsteps almost every night on the first floor of the house. The bedrooms were on the second floor. The dining room and living room was connected by a distinctly creaky wood floor. You knew when it was being walked on. When I first started hearing it at night, I thought it was one of my older brothers sneaking in from being out with friends, but the footsteps never stopped. It circled between those two rooms, walking on that creaking floor until daylight. This went on for months, every night, while my dad steadily grew more ill. I had stopped sleeping. I might doze for the last hour of the morning because I physically couldn't stay up anymore, but here I was, 11 years old, and I was getting angry, and one night I decided to confront this thing. My dad had been moved to the first floor of the house for hospice care, and this was about April of 87. My mom had finally come to me, even though I knew in my soul, and told me that he was going to die. One of the last nights I waited for the steps. Like clockwork, they arrived. It took me a few hours of crawling from my bedroom and down the stairs to get to where I needed to be. When I made it to the bottom step, my dad's room was to my right and the living room and dining room doorway was directly in front of me. I heard the footsteps walk up to the doorway and stop. I saw nothing but darkness, but I felt an intense overwhelming surge of just pure emotion. All the good and all the bad you can think of mixed together and intertwined. I remember tearing up, not out of fear but out of raw feeling. Even now it makes my eyes water. Was this the scariest thing I ever encountered? Yes, but at the same time, it didn't feel evil. This is so difficult to describe, I apologize. A few days later, April 18th, my dad died. I never heard the footsteps again. A few more days after he died, in the middle of the night there was a knocking at the front door. Three knocks in succession. No one else in the house woke up to this either. I was the only one to hear the steps as well. No one was at the door. The porch was empty. The knocks are something I still continue to hear. Always a series of three. It doesn't matter if I'm at home or in another place. The knocks happen. At first I thought it was a sign that someone close to me had died, but they have happened at times when no one that I'm aware of had passed. After hearing them for 30 or so years, I'm wondering if it's a type of an acknowledgement. I do want to be clear. 
I don't believe this was a demon or a traditional haunting. As scared as I was when I continued to think about this years later, there seemed to be a purpose for this, and maybe it was to help my dad in his passing, but I don't know for sure, and I doubt I'll ever have answers for it. Thank you for listening. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, our Let's Read Official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear it featured here on the channel. And grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.